Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome Amplified Traders. It's just past 8 o'clock on Wednesday 25th of September. I um, hope you can see me and hear me clearly. Uh, my name is Will DeLucy. I'll be giving you the briefing and overview this morning of what to expect on the markets for the day ahead. And, well, what a, what a time in history in which we live. Um, phenomenally interesting, uh, not only in UK politics, um, but in, in, in global politics as well. And finally, looking like it's actually beginning to impact financial markets. So just going to give you an overview of some of the, the, the main themes uh, to look out for today, and then we'll look at the, the data ahead. Obviously, the first headline is really on the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court decision. Um, hugely fascinating to watch. Um, that is forcing Boris Johnson now to, well, he's probably just landing, flying back um, from New York to attend Parliament today. Um, it's being opened by Jacob Rees-Mogg at 11.30. And this is, of course, because it was decided by the highest court in the land in the UK that the long delay forced on Parliament, um, known as proroguing Parliament, um, actually, in her exact words, didn't even happen. It was as if they had a blank piece of paper. There was no proroguement of Parliament. That did not happen. It did not exist. And therefore, Parliament must reconvene immediately, which is today. This is um, hugely embarrassing for Boris Johnson. And the advice that he received, I mean, I can... He must be absolutely furious. So the two main advisers he's got, obviously, are Cummings, um, who was the engine behind the vote leave um, in terms of his sort of strategy to advise Johnson to do this. And also then, actually, it was um, someone called Jeffrey Cox, who was a barrister, who was Johnson's legal advisor, who legally advised Johnson that this um, was, in fact, lawful, and he could make this decision to prorogue Parliament. So there's definitely more than egg on the face uh, of the Conservative Party at the moment. I mean, it really throws, throws, the whole thing into, throws the whole thing into uncertainty, and you can see this by the pound, just looking at how the pound has reacted and what's happening now, because you might think, well, hold on a minute, when that really began to came through, the pound initially was supported, and here, um, you know, we pushed through R1, we had a sort of continued trend higher yesterday initially but now when you think about it what does this actually mean for the pound well it's it's still just a huge amount more uncertainty unfortunately because more than likely now there will be a request for an extension of the brexit deadline of course boris johnson can say um, that that's not what he wanted and therefore try and hold on to some of the brexit votes i mean Remember the conservative strategy here by this you know, replacement of pretty much every major MP to make it look very similar to the Vote Leave Party was to try and take away uh, the votes from the Brexit Party um, who had one clear message. So Boris Johnson will still be able to say this is absolutely not what he wanted um, and, and, and try and hold on to some of those Brexit votes. But you know, if we go to a general election at the moment, it's very uncertain to say what will happen. We've just seen on the news wise now, actually, UK leader Corbyn declines to say when he will put forward a vote of no confidence in PM Johnson. And, you know, this is just a huge amount of uncertainty on either side. The Conservative Party have significant turmoil internally. Uh, the Labour Party, really, they, Corbyn has, I think, been saved somewhat by the Supreme Court decision um, on his conference in Brighton that was already looking like a bit of a pickle, to, 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 to put it mildly. So not actually that clear on, on where the pound is going to go short term. So be very, very careful. Um, absolutely, it's going to be news driven. So staying in touch with this desk and staying all over your Twitter feed um, onto your tweet deck is going to be of crucial importance. Um, it's not only in the pound, but as I'll explain as we go through this market meeting, uh, it's really and a lot of assets now, I think we're, we're quite finely poised in, in making a decision. Um, and that's because of the, the, the huge uncertainty we've got in geopolitics. So I've talked about Brexit already. Just one last point on, on, on Brexit. I mean, obviously, we'll be tuned in at 11.30 on the reopening of Parliament this morning. Um, but it's also in the US. And uh, we saw in the US a lot of uncertainty now coming from the potential impeachment of the US president. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. 
um, and then the, the, the whipsaw of really how markets have been moving, um, buffered by both positive and negative geopolitical news. So let's explore that and what it means for your trading decisions going ahead. So last one on the pound in terms of uncertainty, what does it mean for the Bank of England rate cut? Um, one of the things that you have to understand with the pound is you've got you know, two or three things going on all at the same time. Yes, you've got the turmoil within the Conservative Party, the Labour Party, obviously, whether there's a vote of no confidence or not, whether there's an extension, when there will be a general election, and you've got to try and make your own opinion of what's going to happen there. But also, don't forget, you must always consider what's going on with the Bank of England. The Bank of England make their next interest rate decision on November the 7th, just after the original Halloween date, well, the, 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 the postponed Brexit deadline, October the 31st. The more the uncertainty goes on, if there is a further delay in Brexit, which it looks like there is likely to be, um, this will continue the uncertainty over the UK economy, which will therefore put more pressure on the Bank of England to cut interest rates on November the 7th. So it's not a one-way street, this delay on Brexit being good for the pound, because you've got to try and think, what are the Bank of England going to do should there be a continuation of this sort of um, purgatory in which we are in without a clear decision being made? That means, actually, the Bank of England... Um, will be adding to the list of joining the race to the bottom. Those of you who were trading with us all the way back in 2011, you might remember the main theme of that year was something called currency wars. Well, there was a lot going on in 2011, actually, but one of the themes was currency wars in that central banks seemed to be cutting to achieve a race to the bottom in order to have the weakest currency in order to facilitate their global growth out of the recession by relying on exports. It seems like we might be getting there again. If the pound now cuts rates, you've obviously got further dovishness coming out of the ECB as confirmed by Draghi. You've got definite dovishness now coming out of the Federal Reserve. And we expect, you know, at least 0.5% further cuts out of the US. And remember, the Treasury State Department, so that's the, the, the Fed, uh, control interest rates, but it's actually the State Department that control the dollar through the Treasury. So you must keep in mind the, the tweets from Donald Trump and the impact that they can have. Um, so we're in this situation where we have a seesaw, I would say, of, 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 of global events. And yesterday, I think, was a perfect example of it. So if we look at the S&P yesterday, I'm just going to go to a 15-minute chart here. Yeah, if we look at the S&P yesterday, look, we're grinding sideways pretty much, but we started the day having a pop higher all the way really close to these record highs, 3,012 in the S&P being reached, not far away really from, from the all-time highs in the S&P, very buoyant mood starting the overnight session, and that was because of conciliatory tones coming out of China that they're going to reduce or review the tariffs on soybeans, and one of the reasons why stocks can't sell off at the moment or find it hard to sell off is don't forget in October we've got the meeting between Donald Trump and President Xi Jinping where expectations are so low on what can get agreed here. Any type of traction in any type of way is likely to support risk assets. And all of the traders have this in the back of the mind. As long as that October meeting between the US and China has not yet happened, it does have a potential to provide a boost behind risk assets because any type of positive news will be uh, received as risk on. Really interesting discussion in the Financial Times, however, today. Are we past the point of no return? And what that means is you saw Chinese data out over the last few days. You've seen German data out yesterday, IFO survey, absolutely appalling data coming out of the IFO survey. If I just show you that chart here, um, let me just transition so you can see. Yeah, here's the IFO chart coming out of Germany. All right, the IFO was actually, believe it or not, the one silver lining of the cloud of economic data that we had yesterday. But looking at the trend here of IFO, you can see it's, it's not looking good in Germany. We had poor consumer confidence data out of the US. China's data is incredibly poor, and what's worrying for the global markets is the People's Bank of China would normally be easing by now, 
But if you're keeping up to date with what's going on in China, their debt levels are phenomenal. And actually, we've now reached the largest global debt in peacetime in history. And this is another, another issue. Now, I don't want to sort of put my bias onto, onto markets now because I'm very interested, obviously, in, in the momentum and the flow. And until we get this October meeting, I do think equities will find it uh, hard to move lower. But it is a question of, look, yesterday just really sums it up how markets are trading. Positive news from China on the trade war possibility, uh, just deflating slightly as we lead up to this October meeting. Then as we get through the day, sideways activity, not great data coming out of the US, which really started to move equities lower. And then we get a further push lower in the evening as the Democrats come forward to try and propose an impeachment um, on, on, on President Trump. Now, this is nothing too shocking in a way. Um, certainly those of you who have been around a while, um, that word impeachment gets bashed about uh, quite frequently. But it's Nancy Delalio who's now come forward and is giving this a little bit of credibility. And it's a, it's a difficult game by the Democrats because I think finally they've now decided that although there's a potential for Donald Trump to use this impeachment in a way to try and uh, galvanize support that he's being attacked by the media, okay, that he's being attacked by the elites, that's what he does very well. I think the Democrats believe that in this call with the UK Prime, uh, Ukraine Prime Minister into the investigations of Joe Biden, there's going to be enough juice in there that's going to be hard for Donald Trump to get out of the predicament and actually is going to cause more damage than support to Donald Trump. So I think that's what, uh, that's what the Democrats are, are hoping with this type of impeachment. But it's, it's pretty worrying when you, when, when you look at these debt levels, just to transition again. Here you've got obviously World War II causing a huge push higher in global debt levels. But then what we had after World War II, of course, was the global economic recovery, baby boomers, the investment in industry after World War II, huge US economic growth in the 1960s going through into the 1970s. Obviously, late 1970s, um, global economy started to slow down somewhat. But global debt levels are at a really interesting level. Now, as long as there's not a problem, there's not a problem. And this is something to look at US equity markets at the moment. As long as everybody believes that everybody believes that we'll keep on buying equities because monetary policy is ultra low and in fact liquidity therefore is ultra high and the demand for equities will remain strong, then everything will be fine. But I'm really interested in looking at are we, are we now poised for a decision to be made on global risk assets. How far are we before, even if there is a consolatory tone in November between the US and China, actually the damage has been done? And the string of global data that we've had this week certainly looks like we could be at those interesting levels. So on those levels on the S&P, you've got a nice double bottom here going back to the beginning of September, 29.58 providing support at the moment. The handle at 3,000, I think, has been whipsawed enough now. Obviously, it'll be a target if we get a recovery, then for that medium-term high at 30.26. Um, but where are we on the S&P? If you want to try and draw a trend line here, you'll be able to see there's quite an attractive break here. Let me just, it's always dangerous trying to do, trying to do this live, <laughs> as you know, with CQG. I'm trying to catch those, I'm trying to catch there. So that's one here where we found support, 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 support. And you can see after we've broken through, it's definitely changed the trend to, to the downside. But just remember, you know, long-term view, if you think these US equity markets look toppy here, we're going back to July and August here. You know, in the short term, we are incredibly news driven. And we have these seesaw effects of risk on, risk off, risk on, risk off on a daily basis without a decision being made. I think as long as we can stay in this range in the S&P, you know, around from 29.50 there. Can you see the top from August there? Um, as long as we can stay in this sort of sideways range here, then really there's, there's going to be no sharp moves to the downside um, unless the global data or geopolitical news can, can drive us through that. So it's interesting. 
looking at global debt levels certainly, uh, looking at yesterday's consumer confidence, looking at the IFO, it does feel to me like the, the momentum is beginning to, to change. Don't get me wrong though, I know we've been here before and that sort of whipsaw or rotation that I've been talking about between risk assets and safe haven assets, also clearly shown here in gold. If you go to, uh, let's go out a bit here on a, on a daily chart on, on gold. I'm just going to remove the pivot points. You can see really over the last couple of months, look, we had risk off as we go through the 1st of August into September with gold moving towards 1567. Throughout late August then into September, we've got risk on back again and gold moving below that 1500 handle. Now sentiment shifting once further to back to, to risk off. And we've, we have these seesaw effects on, on a wider term. You know, this has been going on. This has been going on on a bigger picture for quite some time. If you go back to 2016, you might remember at the start of 2016, we had, do you remember, that was when markets really sold off after 2015 when the Fed hiked interest rates for the first time in the interest rate hiking cycle. Oil was trading down at $25 and markets started to slow. We had risk off and gold was supported. Throughout 2016, then central banks eased further, turns the taps back on. We then had risk off as global markets recovered. We then had the Trump bump end of 2016, forcing equity markets higher. 2017, sliding sideways until the 20, start of 2018, when we had a sharp rally in US equities. Again, this was the Trump pump more on the fiscal, bringing back fiscal spending and bringing back those tax uh, dollars being stored abroad. So we had risk on, gold moved lower. We've then moved back on to risk off. And you can see these, we have these waves. We're going through these waves at the moment on the longer term pattern as the market tries to make up its mind. I would argue, in my view, we are starting to see more of a trend in risk off at the moment. We're just still getting these shorter term waves, of course, as the market's trying to make up its mind. Um, but really, for me, I'm interested in a decision being made. This decision looks like it's trying to be made, certainly in safe haven assets, the decision has not been made yet on where we're going in the equity markets. It's going to be hard for that decision to be made until Trump and Xi Jinping meet in October. But it's interesting to try and discuss and think about as the data continues to get worse, is there a point past no return that actually, even if there is a conciliatory tone between Trump and Xi Jinping in October, actually the damage has been done to global markets as a result of these trade conflicts, tariffs and negotiations. Um, yeah, just one other thing going back to the UK. Obviously, you probably saw uh, Donald Trump um, and Boris Johnson on the same uh, pedestal yesterday. Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, every time I see, I don't know if I'm wrong here, but every time I see Boris Johnson in Donald Trump's company, have you noticed how awkward he looks and uncomfortable he looks? And I don't know, I'm a big, uh, big fan of looking at uh, body behavior and I'm a big fan of looking at what's, try what's really going on in how somebody feels. And I don't know, Boris Johnson, who can sometimes, you know, he's got his boyish charm, he comes across in his kind of jokey way. But when he's around Donald Trump, I feel like his um, natural spark dissipates. I just don't know what is going on there. Um, just to finish on Trump then, on this talk on impeachment, um, this is all about the Ukraine uh, discussion to try and get Ukraine to investigate into Joe Biden as we lead up to uh, the presidential election. Of course, I remember Clinton being very strongly under investigation for impeachment. It just, it just means more uncertainty over the political situation in the United States. Um, the Democratic majority in the House opens the door for an attempt to remove Mr. Trump from office. Isn't it quite interesting where it's almost at the same time we might have a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson and moves for impeachment against Donald Trump. Um, make of that what you will uh, about what that says about Anglo-Saxon politics at the moment.
Okay, so listen, looking towards the data ahead, what have we got? What do you need to look out for? I think it's going to be incredibly news driven, especially from the UK government, especially from uh, any stories about impeachment coming out of the US. So, you know, the, the biggest opportunities at the moment are going to be for those traders that are agile and well prepared. So as you know, you need to set your technical levels and your strategies looking at your different asset classes now thinking if this then that looking at the bund for example we've got the bund pushing higher towards the overnight highs we have such an important level here at 175 in the bund um so 175 in the bund you know you could say if we're breaching 175 what have we got after that we've really got the spike that we hit on september uh the 12th of 175.61 so this is, you know, again, talking about those waves of risk on and risk off. Going through the end of August, we had risk on, so safe haven assets moving lower. We're now pushing higher in the Bund again. And if you're trading European equities, for example, just keep an eye on what's going on here. And you might use that as a leading indicator in order to try and look for a break lower in the DAX, for example. What's going on in the DAX? Now, obviously, we're moving in the opposite fashion to uh, Bunds, as you would expect. Let me just uh, remove some of the studies here. Anthony's going to not be happy that I'm taking away all of his uh, technical indicators. But there we go. And uh, move to... Continuation settings. Okay. Yeah, so the DAX here, we're approaching this double bottom again over the summer in June and July. Um, this is going to, on a daily chart, look, that's one, two, this is going to be three pretty solid days. And we're trading on the lows um, as I speak right now. Below this level, of course, you've got the handle at 1200. I feel like we've been oscillating around 1200 for years now. Um, in the DAX. But this is where it's going to be interesting this morning, certainly from Europe and on the pound, of course. We're just approaching S1 now. We've got the low of the week coming in at 1.2450. So keep your eyes on the news flow, uh, please. On the data front, on, date, on, on plan data, uh, not really anything of any note this morning. We've got an auction coming out of Germany for Bunds, that's 10 year government debt. Uh, it's at, uh, it's later this morning, so we've got current time 8.35, so in, in, in just over uh, two hours. Um, this afternoon, mortgage applications out of the US. Um, we've got Chicago Fed President Evans speak, so that's going to be quite interesting, bearing in mind uh, that the US data yesterday. We've then got FRMC Brainard speaking. And then we've got FRMC George. So we've got quite a few speakers coming from the central bank um, in the United States. So that's going to be definitely worthwhile watching in the US after we've had this weaker data. Are they able to give more clarity on the expectations of future interest rate cuts? And then obviously being Wednesday, 3.30, we've got the oil data. Just to have a quick look at oil and see where we have moved. Uh, look, here you've got the push on the... Um, attacks on the Saudi oil facilities. We're right now about, we're back in the gap now here. No, there's, there, there's quite a large gap fill here in oil. So technically, I would uh, you know, just, just keep an eye out on that, at least to 56 the handle. Let me put some pivot levels on today and we'll have, have a closer look at where the opportunity could be. But we've really retraced that whole move from the attack on Saudi's facilities. Yeah, as you can see there, here's the gap, nice clear gap. We've got the next sort of target, I would say, as the high on the 12th, 56.26. Now we've broken that low. Then you've got 55.61 to look out for. And then S2 just under that, so actually S1 in the middle there. So definitely looking bearish on the oil front. Speaking of bearish, the pounds continue to move lower, so I'm going to leave you guys to crack on with the day's activity. Obviously, any questions, I look forward to taking them in the room. Um, it's going to be a news-driven day, so please stay fully alert and poised for further market activity. Okay, guys, that's it from me. 
Have a good day.